this spot here is where the chickens were until today and we just moved them on there they were on this for a week after they'd been in all winter because of the uh, the poultry lockdown because of um, uh, avian flu and they've done a brilliant job in just one week you can see there's a few persistent weeds that need to be dug out but for the most part it's pretty good they always do a really great job so they're now on fresh ground doing their thing there and then after that they'll be moved down and then across so they'll do a full rotation um, the further they go down and across the more resilient the land is this has already been worked over a lot um, because this is where we had the potatoes and so on last year it's you know intentionally so it's pretty thickly covered in wood chip you can see and it's the same next door in fact you can see that's pretty much what they're scratching through there so as we get further around it's still more like turf so it tends to bounce back a bit more by the time we finish with this system this will all look like this and they'll go around on a rotation until it's cleared and then once it looks pretty cleared off like this they'll be moved onto fresher ground at a much bigger system beyond i've done whole videos on that but today i'm concentrating on this one now i'm going to dig out these persistent weeds and then I'm going to plant um, basically a fodder crop for the chickens on this. But I'll get it all planted up and then I'll explain what we're doing. That's been completely gone over. I've got all the really tenacious, aggressive weeds out. So that's dock and a little bit of the more, more tenacious, big clumps of creeping buttercup. But I mean, you can see that's a huge amount of difference from next door. And yet in a week, that'll look much the same. So... I've also, because this is on a very slight slope, all the mulch that goes in tends to be scratched downhill and ends up along the bottom there, so I've just spread that out a little bit. I haven't been fancy about it, I haven't done it you know, particularly precisely. Um, and then we're going to seed with this. Now this is a tub of sand that I've put four packets of um, golden amaranth in. Now this is uh, stuff I got from Baker Creek, I got it well, ooh, months ago. Um, I've got one pack in reserve in case this doesn't work. But really, it should do quite well. Now, the golden amaranth apparently is the most prolific in terms of seed production. But if I was to just grab a handful of seed, which is all it'd be, you know, it'd fit in, you know, across two of my fingers there, very small, and try to spread that, I'm going to add it all in one place. So by adding it to sand and then spreading the sand, it waters it down and, you know, makes it a lot easier to get an even spread. Right, the wind's up, so I'm just going to let that die off a little bit and then I'm going to put the seed down. And then I'll just do a little bit at the end just to explain what I've done. So that's that spread fairly evenly over that plot. Now, amaranth seed needs to be barely covered. So we've got, as you can see, might be able to tell, it's quite breezy. There's a squall moving through and we've got rain on and off all afternoon and a bit of heavy rain this evening. So that'll wash it in on something that's as uneven and chunky as this, uh, you know, this wood chip mulch. Uh, surfaces so I'm not worried about that so we'll just let it do its thing and uh, get watered in and then in about a week 10 days once the chickens get moved on from there we're going to do exactly the same thing only I'm going to do it with naked oats now again that's an annual grain like amaranth um, but this is really good for small holder style you know scale systems because it uh, you know it doesn't require a lot of processing it's um, very easy to dehull and it's easy you know, so yeah, we're definitely giving that a go. It hasn't been sold as seed, but that's what we're using it as. Um, you know, really good brand. We use a lot of this stuff. And uh, then we've also got a third grain option, which isn't coming down here. And that is a Syria, uh, sorry, perennial mountain rye, which again, won't come in here because we, this is all annual stuff that gets swapped around fairly regularly. But whatever we're putting new earthworks in place this year, that's what we're using as a ground cover. Uh, you know, it's very unimproved so, uh, soil, it's exactly what it wants. So that's three grain that we're trialling, one perennial, two annual, but even with the annual, it's not a high input grain because the chickens do it all for us. And now it's raining, so I'm going in. <laughs> 